Hi guys, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to our series of Azure Information Protection. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how Azure Information Protection works. Now, if you're watching this series from the beginning, in the last video, we have discussed about data classification and rights management service. Some of the very basic foundational concepts which are moreover related to AIP or data protection service as a whole. And in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about how Azure Information Protection works, what are labels, what are policies, which role is required for you to make any change in AIP console. And the last thing that I'm going to talk about will be scoped and departmental deployment. Now, since we know that Azure Information Protection as a solution has the capability to get a document or email classified, and protected but think about this now from an app layer perspective that what exactly happening or what kind of information getting encoded in a document that results that document to be a classified document now the kind of information which is getting added is label now think about label as an entity which has certain metadata or which contains certain metadata and this gets stamped as clear text or this get encoded as clear text to documents and emails and then the resultant value is a classified document. But now the question comes where exactly all this configuration is done or how my application is now giving me the option to choose a particular classification for my document or to choose a particular label for my document. Now there are two types of configuration that needs to be in place in order for you to achieve this end goal wherein header, footer and watermark are getting applied to documents and emails. The first one is the configuration that has to be done on Azure portal. That means the configuration that has to be done for AIP as a service. This includes creation of policies and creation of labels. So the label as an entity object is actually existing on portal.azure.com. You will be using portal.azure.com to customize all the settings which are moreover related to labels. And then you will be adding multiple labels to one policy and you will be assigning that policy to a specific group of users. Now, once the policy is assigned to user, the user has to install Azure Information Protection Viewer. It's a client that has to be installed on user's machine. Once that client is installed, the user will start getting a label bar at the application itself. So the moment I have drafted my email or the moment I have created the document, while saving the document, I can manually select which label I want to apply. Or if you want as an admin, based on certain keywords that exist in that document, the classification part can be automated as well. So now what I'll do is I'll switch to my machine where I have already installed uh, AIP client just to show you guys how the labels look like and how the user has to apply a particular label. So this is my machine where I have already installed Azure Information Protection Viewer Client and I'm signed in as well with my account. So now if I go to Outlook and I click on New Mail, as you can see, I'm getting different options or different labels which I can select and then the respective label will get applied. Now all this configuration which I have done, I will be covering in the video wherein I will be showcasing you how to create policy or from where you can install this client. As of now, just keep this as a reference point to know what is label bar. This bar which we see here is called label bar and these are all labels. If you want, you can hide the bar as well or if you want, you can apply protection from here as well. Now I'll switch back to my deck and we'll proceed with the rest of the presentation. Before we proceed, there is one more thing which I would like to address here and that is it's the responsibility of your Azure Information Protection Client to query policies, get the dump of all the labels and get them displayed in the label bar of the application which we have just seen. Now, in order to make any change moreover related to AIP when it comes to creation of policies or creation of labels, you require either global admin 
or AIP admin role. Now think about a scenario wherein you are signed in as global admin to portal.azure.com and you have activated Azure Information Protection or you have assigned an AIP license to any of the user. What will happen the moment you will access AIP console for the very first time, there will be a policy that is created out of the box. And since this policy will be available to all the users, this is termed as global policy. Now, since we know in a structured way, a policy contains different labels and all the labels which you will manually add to global policy will be available to all the users. But that doesn't mean that you cannot create any custom policy. For sure, you can create custom policy that you will be assigning to different set of users. Now, since the policy that you are creating will be scoped to a specific group or the new policy that you will be creating will be scoped to some specific set of users, these policies are called scoped policies. Now think about a scenario wherein you have these four labels created and there is only one policy which is the global policy that means the experience the user experience or the labels which the user will get at the app layer or in the label bar will be same org wide but think about a scenario wherein you have let's say a specific group for which you want one more label to be displayed in that case you'll create one more label let's say AIP label and get that label added in the scoped policy so that the group A users should also receive one more label which you have a scoped specifically for group A so in a nutshell if you will compare both the scenario all the labels which are there in global policy will get inherited in the policy of scope or the user specific scope that you have defined apart from the new label that's specifically available for this particular group. So this was all about knowing how the basics of Azure Information Protection works, what are labels, what are policies, which role is required for configuring Azure Information Protection, and what is scoped or departmental deployment. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how to set up Azure Information Protection.